So what do you think of the story that Jesus tells? You admire that steward? Jesus gives him credit. The master, even, in the way that Jesus tells the story, he says, commended that dishonest steward for acting prudently. And then he, Jesus goes on, he says, for the children of this world are more prudent in dealing with their own generation than are the children of the light. Does that make sense to you? That sounds dishonest, doesn't it? When I was uh, young, uh, in my early 20s, one of my uncles had become an expert at setting up pensions for small companies, pension funds with insurance. It was a complicated under the law, but he became, he, he trained himself, became an expert, got training from others. And he was telling this story that uh, an insurance company that wanted to train their agents in, uh, in what his expertise of setting up these pension funds hired him to train some of their agents uh, in that uh, system of how, how to do it. So uh, he trained them and he hired several away from the insurance company, the agents, and uh, for the others, he stole their clients. And he was telling me that, he, and it made him a lot of money. And, uh, so I was telling this story, uh, it shocked me. He, my uncle was very proud of himself. Right? He made a lot of money. He, he knew how to do business. Right? So I was telling someone this story, a little bit shocked. And the person said, well, the person was a businessman who was listening to me and also a lawyer. So he said, well, if that insurance company didn't have him sign uh, a non-conflict agreement, or, then it's their own problem. They deserve what they got. <laughs> the people of this world know how to do business, right? They forgot how they, this insurance company trusted too much. If they had only had a good lawyer, maybe they could have protected but as the guy said, they got what they deserved. So Jesus would have understood that too. He would have understood. My, my uncle was a good businessman. He made money. Yeah. So the people of this world, that's the point that Jesus is making. The people of this world who dedicate themselves wholly to mammon, they bring all their energy and resources toward it. And they cut the corners they need to cut to make the money that they want to make, or to have the power that they desire, or the influence, whatever measure they are working on. And so that's what Jesus is saying and telling this story. He says, look at the world. They know, you know, it's like the first reading. They know how to shorten the uh, shackle, to weight the scales in their own advantage. You know? If you're setting out to make yourself rich, You'll find a way. No, that's true. His point, the but I want to present to you another picture. I and it by happenstance, there's a in the in the bulletin today you'll find a report from it's is a the sheets in the bulletin, and I encourage you to take it, of the Gail Goodrich Legacy Fund. <coughs> Some of you know Gail, she died last year, but uh, she was a very active parishioner, and uh, she dedicated her life. She was a talented and brilliant woman, uh, not only intellectually gifted in organization and gifted in inspiring others, and she used all of that, she used a lot of her energy throughout her life until she died uh, for, in Africa for the most part, in trying to help them work to feed AIDS, in trying to empower women, in trying to uh, facilitate. She worked with a lot of NGOs. In her private life, she, uh, uh, she, she took care of her husband till he died, and then she fought a long battle with cancer herself. But always, whenever she was not in Africa, she lived there and worked, but was here, she was giving her heart and soul to organizing our parish for the sake of the least. 
She was, as my uncle used all his talents to make a buck, and he was good at it. And she used her talents to, at least in my impression, to help us organize, to reach out to the poor. That's the point that Jesus made. Some of you may even, a uh, few months ago, after she died, she left all her household effects to the parish so that we sold all the things she bought in Africa. If you came, how many months ago, maybe? Is it four months ago, five months ago? Four months. What was it? May. What was it? Was it May? May. So in May, did anyone go and buy something that was Gale stuff? All right. That was that. She, so we sold that, and that all went for the benefit of projects in Africa. But surprisingly enough, her sister came a couple months after that and she said, oh, she just made an appointment. Her sister doesn't live in this town. And said, oh, Gail wanted the parish to have this on behalf of the poor. So she hands me a check. I'm looking at this check thinking, how many zeros is there? <laughs> it was $200,000. Wow. So she gave her, not only did she work in her life, but in after she thought of what you do. And, then, and so part of this report today is where what's where her legacy is going. So take a look. There, there's still some left if you want to put in a grant. And if by chance you want to add to it, to her legacy, you can. Whatever. You're going to make a choice though, every one of you. I am too. Uh, and we're either going to go the way of the dishonest steward or we're going to go the way of Christ. And by the way we live our lives and the choices we make, we're going to make that decision. And that's what Jesus is saying. Do not kid yourself. You and I, if we want life, must choose life. We can't spend all our time cutting corners for the sake of ourselves and then expect it to fall in our lap. Jesus is saying, you cannot serve two masters. And only you and only I can choose with the grace of God which master we're going to serve. And so I encourage you, if you want life, to choose life. We know how business is. If you want other things, you know how to get it. Go for it. But you will not have life. That's what Jesus is asking us. If you want life, choose it. Don't kid yourself that you can play both sides of the street. Right. Choose life.